Now we are going to discuss about the structure of DNA discovered by the Watson and Crick. Let's get into the topic. In the year 1953, so there was a two scientists named James Watson and Francis Crick. Okay, so they both discovered the structure of DNA. So they found that DNA is a double helix model. So this double helix model is based on two investigation. The first one is Charga fruit for the base pairing and then the second one is X-ray diffraction pattern of DNA. So the study of this X-ray diffraction pattern uh, helped Watson and Crick to design the 3D structure of the DNA. 3D structure of DNA. Let's see this in detail. So the first thing is Charga Fruin. In the year 1950, so there was a scientist called Erwin Chargaff. So he formulated the important generalization of this DNA structure. Okay, so that's why this is called as a Chargaff rule. So here, the first thing is the amount of purines will be always equal to the pyrimidins, which means is equal to T plus C. So this is the purines. And this is the pyrimidins, right? So adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Okay, so this is the first thing. So the second thing is about A will be always equal to T, and then G is always equal to C. Then the third thing is about the base ratio of A plus T is constant is constant for a species but this ratio may vary for one species to another species okay so this ratio can be used to identify the species also so which species is this so we can identify the species with the help of this base ratio so the main thing about charga rule is the first thing the purines will be always uh, equal to the pyrimidines which means in the amount and this adenine is equal to the thymine and then guanine is equal to the cytosine. Guanine is equal to the cytosine. Then coming to the X-ray diffraction pattern of DNA. So first of all, we have to uh, discuss about this X-ray crystallography. So this X-ray crystallography is a technique for the determining of the 3D structure. Okay, mainly the 3D structure of a large molecule. 3D structure of large molecule. So the pattern obtained from the diffraction of x-rays, okay, that is known as the x-ray diffraction pattern. So the pattern from diffraction of x-ray through the crystals, you know, we are through crystal is termed as the x-ray diffraction pattern. So we are going to discuss in detail about this X-ray diffraction pattern of DNA in the further slides. So let's see what they have found. Here also there are two scientists called Wilkin and Franklin, okay, in the year 1953, okay. So they uh, took this X-ray diffraction picture of this DNA. They helped for the Watson and Crick. Now let's see the Watson and Crick model of DNA. So coming to the Watson and Crick model, so this was discovered in the year 1953. So for this, they got Nobel Prize. So Watson, Crick, along with Wilkin. So he was the guy who helped for the X-ray uh, diffraction of DNA, right? So these three guys got Nobel Prize in the year 1962 for the structure of, for discovered the structure of this DNA. So now we are going to see uh, the important features of this Watson and Crick model. Okay, so the first thing is two polynucleotide chains or stacked. So as I've already told you, the DNA is made up of polynucleotide. Okay, so we have already discussed about it. If you don't know about what is polynucleotide, you can go through this part one video. Let's draw the two stands of the DNA.
okay so these are two strands of dna so one end has phi dash and the next step is three dash and here three dash two phi dash so these are the two long polynucleotide chains and the two stands are joined by the nitrogen bases right so these are the nitrogenous bases that is base base pairs which means purines and pyrimidines pyrimidines that is Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Okay, so depending upon the type of nitrogenous base, okay, which means uh, the sugar may contain adenine, the sugar may contain guanine or cytosine or thymidine. So depends upon this, the DNA has four kinds of deoxyribonucleotides. So depending upon the type of nitrogenous base, DNA has four kinds of deoxy ribonucleotides for example let me draw the structure here so this is the sugar so phosphate is there so if this sugar has adenine here okay then this molecule is called as deoxy adenosine 5 monophosphate which means DAMP okay so if the sugar contains guanine then it is called as a deoxy guanosine 5 monophosphate which means DGMP P. If this contains thymidine, then it is called as a deoxy thymidine 5 monophosphate, which means DTMP. If this contains cytidine, then it is called as a deoxy, if this contains cytosine, sorry, then it is called as a deoxy cytidine. 5 monophosphate which means DCMP. So these are the four kinds of deoxyribonucleotides depends upon the nitrogen basis. So the next important feature of this Watson Brick model is glycosidic and phosphodiester bond. Okay, so we have already discussed about it, we are not going to detail. So the thing is the carbon, right? So the carbon in the first position of sugar is attached to the ninth position of adenine or guanine. And then the carbon in the first position of sugar attached to the first position of thymine and cytosine. So this is about the glycosidic bond so this glycosidic bond is also called as the yen glycosidic linkage so this is the linkage between the nitrogen bases so this is the nitrogen bases and the pento sugar is called glycosidic bond coming to the phosphodiester bond it is also called as the 3 to 5 dash phosphodiester linkage actually so the bond between two adjacent nucleotide of two adjacent sugar molecule at 3 to 5 dash position with phosphate group is called as phosphodiester bond. So these are the two bonds mainly attached to the DNA. Next thing is DNA duplex. So actually the DNA has two polynucleotide chain which are spirally coiled, right? These two spiral strands of DNA is called as the DNA duplex. So 
two spiral strands of DNA is called as the DNA duplex. So let me draw the two coiled structure of the DNA. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, two strands have a diameter of 20 Armstrong. So from here to here, it is 20 Armstrong. In the DNA, there are two grooves, which means cut in the DNA. You know, this is the minor groove. which is 12 Armstrong and then this is the major group which is 22 Armstrong. There will be the basis, right? Basis. So, the distance between this two base pairs is 3.4 Armstrong and the distance between the two spirals, you know, let me change the color for that. Okay, so this is the one bend, right? So from here to here, okay? So distance of this is about 34 Armstrong. So, these are the stuffs they found with the help of the X-ray diffraction pattern. So, this is the distance between adjacent deoxy nucleotide. Okay. And this is the one turn of spiral. Actually, these two stands are not coiled upon each other but the double stand is coiled upon itself around a common axis okay which is right-handed so which is coiled at the uh, right-handed manner so just like a rope stair is twisted to form the spiral okay so this coiling will becomes plectonymic so what is meant by plectonymic in the sense so these two stands are there, right? So these two stands cannot be separated without completely unwinding, unwinding them. Okay. So if we want to separate these two stands, we have to unwind them. Okay. So that is called as a plectonymic. So as it is the right-handed uh, spirally coiled, it is the it has a type that is B form. So the type of DNA is B form. So, coming to the next important feature of this Watson and Crick model is the backbone of DNA stand. So, in the DNA, what is the backbone? This stand is the backbone, you know. So, we know this stand is made up of sugar and phosphate group. That is, if they ask what is the backbone of the DNA in the sense, deoxyribose sugar and phosphate group or phosphoric acid so these two are the backbone of the dna which means deoxyribose sugar and the phosphate group will be always right angle to the base pairs sugar and phosphate will be always right angle to the base pairs it's true right for example this is the sugar phosphate is attached here in this side the nitrogen bases will be present so this is always right angle okay so next see the next feature its polarity so let me draw one stand of the dna okay so this is from phi dash to 3 dash. So if there is a phi dash, there will be the free phosphate. And if it is the 3 dash end, and there will be the free OH group. 
so this is mainly depends upon the sugar you know so if the phi dash position of the sugar is attached with the phosphate okay then it is then it is called as the phi dash end if the sugar has free oh group in its three dash position then it is called as called as the three dash end this is all about the polarity so it, it will be same like that of other uh, stand also you know this three dash and this is five dash so this end has the uh, free oh group and this end has the free phosphate group in the sugar molecule so the next feature is about complementary base pairs so what is meant by complementary which means uh, something going together with right so for example if we take the nitrogen bases so always a will be pairing towards the t and then c will be always pairing towards the g so we know that aridine and guanine are purines and then cytosine and thymidine are pyrimidines so this purines will be always paired with the pyrimidines so the definition for this complementary base pairing is that the way in which the bases form pairs between the two stands right is known as complementary base pairing so this base pairing is the pairing formed in the dna double helix between purines of one stand and pyrimidines of in the second stand so this is called as the complementary base pairing let's see the next feature so which is hydrogen bond so the two stands of dna let me draw the stand yes so the two stands of dna are held together by the hydrogen bonds right so for example if this stand has a obviously this stand is going to have let me draw the end also i mean by dash two 3 dash and then 3 dash to 5 dash okay so if this stand has a and if this stand has t it has two hydrogen bonds for example if this stand has c and if it is has g there will be three hydrogen bonds okay so that two strands of dna or held together by the hydrogen bonds between their base pairs or bases so this is all about the hydrogen bond so we have to be very clear so which has two hydrogen bond and which has three hydrogen bond okay so adenine and thymine will be connected with the two hydrogen bond and cytosine and guanine with the three hydrogen bond so coming to the next anti parallel stands so whenever i am drawing this uh, dna i have to write this end okay so from this itself we can find that the dna has the anti parallel stand okay so one stand will be running from 5 dash to 3 dash and the other will be running from 3 dash to 5 dash so the two strands of dna duplex are parallel but are oriented in opposite direction right so that's why such stands are called anti parallel stands so these are the eight important features of this watson and crick model of dna it's one of the very important question so the next thing we are going to see about so we obviously know that the dna has two stands how we can separate this stands which means denaturation and then how we can join these two stands which means renaturation so the denaturation of dna can be done by heating okay so let's see the definition of this denaturation so the conversion of double stranded dna to 
single stranded state by heating. Okay, this important word is called DNA denaturation. Okay, so coming to the renaturation, it can be done by incubated at low temperature. Okay, so the renaturation definition is when the denatured DNA is incubated at a low temperature, so the separated stand can be rejoined. Okay, the two separated strands reassociate to form a DNA duplex. So this is called as the renaturation. Let me draw the stand here first. Okay, so this is the considered as a DNA. Okay, so these are the hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen bases. So now I am going to denature this DNA by the help of heating. Okay, now the stands get separated. Okay, so if we incubate this denatured DNA in the at the low temperature in the sense we can reassociate this stance. So this process is DNA denaturation and this is DNA renaturation. So that's it. So we can see uh, some other interesting topic in the DNA in our next video.